Hello guys, so far we have discussed so many videos about dockers and also we discussed how you can create a production grade docker not just a sample project, we did real production grade docker, right? So if you didn't watch that video, I think you should that watch that video because there we discussed so many things, securities and uh, how you can reduce the size of the docker, the layered structure and everything but we never discussed how you can run the docker on the cloud or on prem or wherever so there are two different ways you can run a docker on a um, cloud one is a kubernetes and other one is a, if it is a aws other one is a, a ecs so creating a kubernetes cluster and run this on uh, on that cluster is will be little uh, lengthy video or like little complicated topic because there are so many things we need to do to uh, set up a kubernetes cluster but if you want me to talk about the kubernetes yeah we can do but um, today i'm going to show you how you can run your docker using an ecs ECS is not the Kubernetes, but kind of a similar because Kubernetes is a Google product and then AWS support managed service uh, to the Kubernetes, but ECS is an AWS own uh, infrastructure so you can run your dockers. So um, we are going to set up the ECS cluster uh, from the scratch and we are going to create this docker and run, the, run this docker on the ECS cluster. Before I start, I want to tell you something. Maybe you're first time watching my videos or you may not my previous Docker videos. And also maybe you don't have a much idea about the Dockers. So in that case, I should help you. So therefore, I'm going to create a Docker and a project and a Docker from the scratch, but it's a very small one. But if you have some experience with the Docker or if you watch my previous video, this, this step, the rest of the step, how you can host this Docker will be identical to this one uh, if you're uh, hosting uh, like maybe Angular, maybe React, maybe Nest.js, doesn't matter what it is, the rest of the step would be same. But here, I'm going to create a very simple Docker, it's a very simple service to help if someone is watching this video for the first time. Okay, so let's get started and let's go here. Uh, I'm going to create a new directory call, let's say employee service. This is our usual uh, service. And I'm going to change that. Right. So I'm going to create npm pack project. And I'm going to create with the uh, all default. Okay, cool. And I'm going to open this project. Right, cool. So first I'm going to create a simple uh, file. Server.js. And to run this file, I need the express, so I'm going to install that. npm i express. And now I have the file created, so I'm going to use import. Right, so this is my service and I want to make sure um, since I'm using the import, I need to go back and change the types here. Type to module, right? So now to just to make sure I'm going to run this server, this will run on port uh, 2000 and then I'm going to put 3000 and I'm going to just uh, raise a simple curl command, curl local host port 3000 and say hello from um, employee service okay so sounds good now i'm good so now i need to create a docker file to uh, run this as a docker right so how i'm going to do that i'm going to create a docker file here right so th there's a one thing important when you create a docker file because when you uh, run the docker build command it will send the doc context it will send an entire the current directory the docker context right but when you get the current directory you have this node modules directory which you don't need because uh, when you have a node module i mean in this case it's a simple file but otherwise you will have like 200 300 megabytes of uh, file so therefore you need to ignore these uh, files so you can say docker ignore file and I'm going to tell node modules should skip, right? So node modules should skip. And here I'm going to tell from node, right? So node, let's say latest, okay? And then what I need to do is I need to copy 
my package JSON file. Package, I need to package and package log JSON both, so I'm going to copy that. And to destination, since I'm copying multiple files, I need to use a dot and a forward slash, right? And then I need to run npm install command. So what it will do is it will install the dependencies to my Docker, okay? So now I want to copy server.js file here, right? I want to copy the server.js file here. So now I'm going to run the file, cmd, I'm going to run the node, and the file would be server.js file, right? I mean, I'm not going to use expose ports or anything, I mean, because um, it will be, I can handle that uh, when it to the runtime. So let's try to build this, let's first see whether we have any images. So we don't have any images, so I'm going to docker build. I'm going to tell this as employee service and build from the current context, right? So you can see here, now it's context transfer limited to 53 bytes because um, we eliminate the node modules through this uh, uh, docker ignore file and you can try when you do your own uh, practice. So you can see by without creating a docker ignore file, it will maybe send few megabytes because of this um, file, because of this node modules, right? So now looks like yeah, it's created. So if we go back here, we can we should have Docker um, images. Okay, so we have our employee file, employee uh, Docker, right? So now let's run this Docker. How you can run this Docker? Run. So I'm going to forward uh, local port three thousand to the Docker port 3000. If you want, you can port any different port. Like you can say even port eighty or eighty eighty. To 3000 you can do anything you want and minus name is employee and I'm going to create this as a employee service okay and it's a server running on port 8080 and uh, sorry port 3000 because of that um, uh, log entry so let's po uh, see the traffic on the port 8080 right oops this already right 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 so let's say um, curl local host we should call for 8080 right because if we call for 3000 it won't work because uh, we forward 8080 to 3000 right it's it's uh, failed on the 3000 but it work on the 8080 why it work on 8080 because see if you run the 8080 it works because you are running the docker here and now we can uh, close the docker now if you know about a little bit about the docker we know now when we create the dockers we need to have a docker register to store the docker so in this case we can keep this on the docker hub if you want but uh, aws has its own uh, docker registry called ecr uh, elastic container registry right so let's create a repository on the ecr let's go to ecr elastic container registry so now I don't have any repository. Um, so now I'm going to create a repository. The repository is a private repository for now. And I'm going to create it as an employee service repository. And I don't need any of any of other things here. Right. So here now you can see uh, I create a repository. Now if you go to this uh, repository, you will see I don't have any images yet. If you click this we push commands button, you can get all the commands you need to get your image into this repository. Here I'm going to copy this first command where I want to log in. Uh, make sure uh, this run on a terminal, not on your IDE terminal because this need a real TTY uh, device. So I'm going to paste this and I don't have a default profile set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, tell my profile here with the profile flag. Profile is AWS personal, right? So then I run this command and then it will tell uh, my login is success. You need to make sure you do this with the, um, your project directly, ideally, because if you want to build the Docker, otherwise it won't be a problem, okay? So here, uh, it asking me to docker build again, because I don't want to build because I already built the docker. So therefore, I'm going to run next command directly. So it will tag my command, uh, docker with the uh, repository name. And then I can use this command to push, right? With this command, it will push my docker directly to AWS repository. So again, if you, have main, if you want to re rebuild your docker, you need to make sure you own the project directory in terminal.
it may take some time to push this image so until it get pushed we can go here and create the ECS cluster right so I'm going to here to ECS electric uh, elastic container service and from here you can see um, I don't have any cluster so I'm going to create a cluster so here it's asking whether it's a networking only or EC2 instance with the Linux and networking or EC2 Windows with the networking. I want to uh, Linux with the networking. And then it asking my cluster name. I'm going to give a generic name like Code Labs cluster. This can be anything. So it's asking what type of EC2 instance I need. I'm going to need uh, on-demand instances. And what is the type of the instances I need? I'm going to create here a T3 micro because in that case I won't get built because the T3 it's free tier eligible. And number of instances is one for now. And I don't worry about these uh, things. And it asking to create new VPC. No, I can use the existing VPC. And it asking me a subnet. I'm going to use um, this subnet. Okay and auto, uh, auto assign public IP I'm going to set to enable and the security group I'm asking it to create a new security group that's fine I don't need any specific things so inbound rule I'm going to tell from anywhere that is fine and make sure my port is port 3000 because my service is on port 3000 okay and that's it and then it's creating my um, cluster, right? So maybe now my Docker is pushed. Yeah, Docker is pushed. If we go here back to ECR until this get elastic container registry. So now we should see in our repository. Yeah, you can see the one image, right? It's pushed. Okay, so this is the image. So now let's see our cluster. Cluster is still being created. Okay, so now cluster also created and you can go to view cluster and then you will see a bunch of um, information about the cluster. So I'm not going to explain these things because this is not about uh, ECS and if you need to learn about ECS in detail, just let me know. Uh, here you have services, we don't have any services yet and we have a task also, we don't have a task yet. So what you are going to do is, we are going to create a task on the ECS to tell to run our employee service, okay? So for that, we need to create a task definition and I'm going to create a new task definition. It's asking with the Fargate or EC2. So Fargate mean it's kind of abstraction layer on top of the uh, EC2. So you don't have to worry about any provisioning thing, but I'm going to go with the EC2, okay? Here it's asking task definition name. I'm going to tell it's an employee service and then uh, task role i don't need have any role for now network mode i'm going to keep as it is total memory i'm going to allocate to 20 128 mb for now because um, that would be more than enough for me and add a container so now i need to go here right and i need to get this container uri and then i come back here add container i'm going to tell it's an employee service and image is this one right i don't have any uh, hard limit to anything but i want to map port 3000 of this to uh, port 3000 of the docker container port right for this one i don't need the health check but if you go with the like uh, advanced configuration you can set up the proxies and everything here but i don't need that and i'm going to add so i think uh, that's pretty much it. I don't need any further configuration. I'm going to keep those on a default, right? So here you can have a mesh. Uh, if you want, if you heard something like a link or something like that, some, some, some sort of a thing you can create here and the proxy configuration. And I don't need this, any of this. And I'm going to create the service definition, right? So now service uh, task definition is created successfully. So now I'm going to start this on the task, okay? So if we come back here to the uh, cluster, okay, the run task. Oops, I I need to set up here, what is it? It's uh, EC2, I won't run on EC2 and task, right? So in, in a moment, it will con convert it to running from the pending state, we'll see.
So meantime, let's go to EC2 so we can see the EC2 instance uh, created on behalf of this one. So if you go to EC2, so you can see only one instance available, right? That is the instance uh, created by this one. So you can see EC2 instance to EC2 container service code labs cluster. And we'll see whether this is convert to running state yet. Yeah, it's going to running. So now what we can do is we can go to EC2 instance and we can get this and we can get the public uh, IP address, right? Public DNS for this one. And I'm going to go here. And if I go here, it won't give me anything because I didn't open the port 80. But if I go here, port 3000, because that was the port I uh, enabled, right? So now it will say, see, hello from employee service. So this means our service, our the simple Docker we created, now we uh, push into the AWS Docker registry, ECR, and now running on the ECS. So you know the difference between ECR and ECS. ECR mean where we push the Docker, so the container registry. ECS mean the service you we can use to run the container, right? ECS is like a little advanced topic. You can do so many things with the ECS. Uh, but not like a Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a whole different world. And uh, but if you don't want to go to that uh, troublesome main like process with the creating a Kubernetes cluster, ECS would be a good option if you need to run once in a while a Docker. So we learn something new. And subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And also make sure you comment and like if you like this video, so that will help YouTube to bring this video little up. So then stay safe. Take care. Until we see in the next video.